Hey folks, Pat here from DNS and this Madison Area Fishing Report is current as of October 25th. Well, it's fall, so a lot of stuff to talk about. Let's just get right into it. Uh, the Thienesville Fishway Camera. I always like to start the reports off this time of year with this. Uh, the glass up there is super dirty, and I actually called uh, them yesterday and asked if they could send somebody down to clean that off because, you know, this is the busiest time of the year for the camera, and if you can't see anything, what's the point? Uh, I can tell you that I have seen several salmon swimming through this morning, even though it seems like we're jinxed every time I'm doing this report. We can never get any fish to swim by, but uh, yeah, lots of fish swimming by even this morning and uh, last several weeks. So the salmon are running up the river and that is awesome. And uh, we'll talk about it later. I made a post yesterday about a bunch of muskies getting stocked in Lakes Monona, Winger, and Wabisa. You can see the video here. Thanks to Harley for taking that. These are uh, fingerlings. I don't know if you can see them in the nets here that, well, as they're dumping them in, but I mean, they're like the size of my forearm. So I, I don't, I'm not sure fingerlings the right word, but uh, when they stock them at this size, they have a much better chance of survival, which is great. And um, these fish are also a great lake strain. So if you think about Green Bay muskies, uh, that's what these are. And these fish are uh, special because, uh, well, A, it's the first time they've ever been stocked in the Madison chain, but B, uh, they grow big fast and uh, they can grow up to 50 inches in just 10 years. So it'll be exciting to see, um, you know, what the fishery is like, you know, down the road here. So anyway, big thanks to Cap City muskies. Inc. Uh, for you know funding that and the DNR for facilitating. Uh, it'll be great to see how that all shakes out. Um, turnover and the Mendota or the buoy and uh, lake temperatures have been a topic of much discussion here at the shop lately. Um, pretty sure Wingra, or I'm sorry, uh, Kiganza and Wabisa have turned over. Some people even say that those lakes don't actually turn over because they're too shallow to turn over, but that's a whole other discussion. Uh, and for those of you that don't know what turnover is, it's when uh, this is on the uh, um, Clean Lakes Alliance website, they got cool little graphics here. It's when the warm water on top gets cold this time of year and the, the cold water that is on the bottom is actually warmer than the warm water on top and the warm water comes to the top, the cold water goes to the bottom and it flips the whole lake. Uh, it can make the water turbid and it can screw fishing up for a couple days and uh, like I said, uh, pretty sure it's happened on Monona, Wabisa and Kiganza. Uh, Mendota is up for debate uh, only because you know, here on the buoy readings, it says, you know, basically 58 degrees till you get to the bottom part where there's 54 degrees, which would tell you that it has not flipped. But Harley sent me a screen grab the other day from the shop here, read, and the buoy read 58 degrees all the way down. And I thought, this is great. Uh, you know, I can make an announcement, came in the next morning, and it was reading like this again. So who knows if it's flipped? Uh, it, it does affect fishing, but I mean, if you got a chance to go fishing, just go fishing. Um, if, the, if the fishing sucks, at least you're fishing, right? So anyway. Um, just wanted to go over that and what turnover is and let you know that turnover is very close. And if I hear anything definitive, I will let people know. But uh, yeah, after turnover, some of the best fishing of the year. Uh, actually, I'll just say it. It's the best fishing of the year. So uh, and we'll talk about how that affects things as we go through the report. Um, shop news. Um, oh, I uh, wanted to thank Dave Lundy for sending me this pic. This is of the um, Governor Nelson uh, state park boat launch they pulled the piers already so if you want to launch a boat on lake mendota you're going to have to use uh, one of the city or county launches and i will also try to keep you uh, posted as to when those piers get pulled and hopefully they stay in uh, for quite a while yet uh, not much going on in the shop uh, front door we got the jam for cans food pantry event on uh, november 9th at the bfw and cottage grove and trunk or treat up the street here at the uh, church if Anybody wants to promote an event, swing by and drop off a poster, especially if it's conservation or fishing related. Uh, turnovers happening. Fish got their feed bag on, especially muskies. Suckers are the way to go. We got a bunch of them and get more later this morning. Swing on by and grab some. So I think that's pretty much it for news and announcements. We can get into the report. We've had another dry and pretty warm week, really, temperature-wise, although temps have dropped a bit the last couple days, and we even got a little rain last night. Tomorrow looks like a little cooler, uh, but highs the rest of the weekend and into next week look very nice, so make sure you get out and enjoy the weather while it lasts. Um, I guess we already talked about the buoy, um, 58 degrees essentially on Lake Mendota, cooler, and turnover has happened downstream as we go. Um, 
but generally around the chain, yes, uh, we've had warm days, cooler nights, sometimes windy, made the lake temps come down nicely, so turnover is upon us. Like I mentioned, uh, the fishing can really get screwed up, but only for a couple days, and it sounds like uh, fishing has already been picking up on many of the lakes, but it was kind of a rough week here for a lot of species from a lot of folks I was talking to. Weeds are getting harder and harder to find, and uh, I was talking with Noah Humfeld just this morning uh, from Madison Angling Guide Service. He's been finding a lot of his fish. He's been on Mendota a lot, uh, fishing walleye. He's been finding a lot of his fish on shoreline, rocky shoreline breaks, uh, sometimes surprisingly deep in 20 plus feet of water sometimes, but also finding them in five feet of water. So, you know, with all this change going on in these transition periods, uh, tr fish don't really know, you know, what to do. So they, you might find them shallow, you might find them deep, uh, but you'll likely find them near transitions. Uh, mid lake humps still have fish on them. And, um, you know, you'll also find smallmouth uh, mixed in there. Uh, but anyway, uh, bluegill action around town has been slow. Uh, look for them in 10 feet of water or less. Anywhere you can find weeds, you'll likely find fish. Bluegill bite on the Monona Terrace wall has been slow, probably because of turnover. And uh, But usually turnover pushes those gills into Monona Bay, uh, and the bite at the terrace will slow down. Uh, but we'll see how that all shakes out. Uh, if it's gills you're after anywhere on the chain, a small jig tip with a piece of red worm spike or wax worm is really all you need for those fish. Crappies continue to be elusive, uh, but they, I have heard that they have uh, moved into Monona Ter the Monona Terrace area a little bit more. And we'll talk about that. And, and into Monona Bay, too, they're starting to show up, so that's good. Unfortunately, other than a few reports here and there, I'm not hearing much in the way of perch around town. Uh, as far as bass go, largemouth are up shallow. And... Um, but that fishing has slowed with the cooler temps. Uh, lots of lures still work for those fish, but if you're gonna uh, wanna try to target largemouth, you're gonna wanna slow down your presentation. And we're back here. So yeah, as far as smallmouth go, uh, they're being found on rocky shoreline breaks in 10 to 15 feet of water, but also very shallow. Uh, sometimes I've been hearing about fish coming out of a, as shallow as three feet of water. Uh, and if you can find rocks, that's great. If you can find weeds in the rocks, even better. Um, and you know, a lot of things work for those fish. Uh, I, live bait's been really hot for all species. They're trying, bulking up, getting their fall feed bag on. Uh, but a shiner chub or a small sucker uh, can work well. Uh, but if you're tossing lures, you know, paddle tails, stuff like that, uh, can also be really great. Uh, pulling those through the weeds, and you might even get a bonus walleye. Uh, and I guess speaking of walleye, in addition to the shallow, rocky, weedy areas, walleye are being found on rocky breaks near shallow flats and on mid lake humps in good numbers. Uh, here again, wa large walleye fatheads, chubs, and small suckers are all solid choices. Otherwise, uh, paddle tails, crankbaits, and jerkbaits have been working well uh, during the day, but especially when those fish move up shallow at night. Um, and if you're casting from shore, you might as well just toss out a lighted bobber with a minnow on it and have all your bases covered. Uh, the musky bite's been good around town and should really light up now that turnover's happened. Uh, stop in and get some big musky suckers. Otherwise, uh, the pike are bulking up for winter around the chain. Action on Mendota's been exceptionally good. Uh, area rivers and streams are running at about their average seasonal levels for this time of year, so pretty low. Uh, tributaries to Lake Michigan have also been running very low, um, and, but, and, and that slowed the salmon run down a bit, but we'll talk about that in a little bit as well. All right, and we're back again. Sorry, we've been pretty busy here uh, this morning. So anyway, yeah, a little more detail here. We'll get into some stuff. Uh, Cherokee surface weeds are gone, and outside of some dead patches of lily pads here and there, casting from shore is pretty pleasant right now. I haven't heard any specific reports recently, but they're usually a good population of gills, uh, bass, and pike up here. Uh, down the road here at the 113 bridge. Um, I haven't heard much, I haven't heard of any catfish coming out there in, in quite a while, but there continues to be a nice mixed bag of fish, including some walleye that I've heard about recently, but you know, pike, bass, panfish. Uh, like, like I mentioned, the catfish have moved out into Lake Mendota and they've been there all summer. Uh, folks are still getting them uh, pretty regularly all around town. Uh, spots, hot spots I've heard about are uh, the Warner Park break wall here, Tenney Park break wall, University shoreline have been good. And uh, yeah, you just never really know what those fish will bite. But other than that, um, as far as uh, bluegills go, you know, if you can still find some weeds, that's great. F uh, fish those, uh, find good numbers of gills also on mid lake humps. Although it sounds like they're moving a little deeper on those humps. I've been hearing about fish gills out there as deep as 20 feet off the bottom. So uh, yeah, and, and a lot of fish still up shallow. If you can find weeds, great. Um, crappie have been being picked up here and there, mixed in with those fish. Uh, and while I don't hear a lot about the numbers, but the, the size structure on those fish has been great. Uh, like I mentioned, not much for perch reports, although I think I mentioned in the last report, I'm still hearing about uh, large schools of fish hanging out kind of over here on the west end in like the 20 to 30 foot range. And um, I, I haven't had any confirmation that they're perch, but they're probably perch. Uh, walleye action has been picking up shallow at night um, all around the chain. So uh, Tenney Park's been hot, Warner Breakwall, University Shoreline, 
Uh, you can get those fish during the day, like Noah was saying. Find yourself a, a, a large flat with like a, a break and fish that break. Uh, but if you're fishing at night, move up into the flats in the very shallow water. Uh, minnows, chubs, uh, small suckers have all been uh, great. But you know you can use paddle tails and, and jerk baits. And if you're fishing at night, you know like I said, you know toss out a, a minnow with a lighted bobber is a, a great way to do to catch those fish. Uh, pike are plentiful around uh, Lake Mendota, especially, and they've got their fall feed bag on uh, to the point of annoying some people with how many they're catching. But um, yeah, always a chance at a giant out there. Uh, as far as um, Tenny Park goes, uh, it's been a nice mixed bag of fish during the day. Like I said, good walleye action at night. Action below the locks is always hit or miss this time of year. I did just talk to a guy who had been getting some bluegills out there, and I got somebody else coming in the store here. So we will and I've heard about some fish in the river uh, coming out of the river here uh, closer to evenings or very early in the morning under the bridges during the days. Uh, but yeah, a few walleyes uh, in there. Also some fish hanging out down here where the Yahara River dumps in. Heard about a lot of pike down there. But as far as Monona goes, uh, you know, a lot of fish, all, it was panfish are moving shallow, bluegills in the weeds. Uh, like I said, the bluegill bite out here off the Monona Terrace uh, has been quiet lately, but the crappies have moved in there uh, sort of. So they're getting some nice ones, mostly near dark. Uh, the crappies have also moved into the triangles down here and on Monona Bay. Um, so that action's uh, really been picking up and a lot of gills in there. A lot of the fish that live out here during the summer move into the bay. And of course, everybody knows that's a great spot for ice fishing uh, because those gills are in there all winter. Um, oh, and the walleye bite over here has also uh, been picking up. I've been hearing about some fish coming off the John Nolan Drive and triangles area at night. Uh, same with, same with, um, the Monona Terrace area, Law Park and that. So uh, yeah, that's always a great, uh, exciting time to be out uh, fishing for wallies. You get some real nice fish. It's not a numbers game out there, but some really, really nice quality fish. Uh, Lake Wingra, uh, the weeds aren't as bad over there, so you can get over and, and maybe if you got a young person, catch a ton of tiny bluegills. Otherwise, there's good population largemouth in there. And the musky uh, population is also uh, real good over there. And I've been hearing about uh, quite a few fish, although no real giants like you see out here on Lake Monona. Uh, panfish in Turtle Bay, panfish in Weechawuk, formerly known as Squaw Bay. Um, and yeah, I think that does it for Monona. Uh, still good gill ac or panfish action up here in the dredge hole on Mud Lake. Uh, also, the weeds are uh, dying back quickly here in the shallow or the flats of Mud Lake. But if you can find weeds, you'll likely find uh, concentrations of largemouth. Uh, same thing on the north end of Wabisa and the south end as far as largemouth go. And you'll find gills in those same areas. Been hearing about some good gill action down here on the southeast uh, end of the lake. Some crappies down there too. Uh, but the walleyes have kind of been the, the big news down there. Brian Zuki and uh, Larry Smith did a show a couple weeks back. And I don't think a day goes by where you don't see six boats out here from Babcock. Uh, but they're out there for a reason and they're catching fish. Um, I haven't heard much personally about musky reports off Wabisa, but they... Um, are certainly catching fish down there. Uh, down on uh, Kiganza, uh, they are still dredging as far as I know above the AB bridge here, so you might find some dirty water in the fish camp area, but I have heard uh, good reports of gill action over there, So, and also some good gills being picked up down here on the southeast and kind of out from the state park. And speaking of state park, if you're looking for walleyes, you know, this Williams Point area, there's some nice breaks out here uh, is, is a good spot. Uh, but other than that, haven't heard much off uh, Kiganza. Down on the Rock River is running uh, very low, like all rivers uh, this time of year. I uh, haven't been hearing about a nice mi mix of fish at the Indian Ford Dam and the Jefferson Dam up here at Jefferson Dam right there. Uh, on Kashkanang, still a nice mixed bag of fish, you know, sheepshead and white bass and the like. Uh, but the walleye action has been picking up. I, I checked the bait box on the rocks um, reports, and uh, yeah, they've been pro reporting some nicer walleyes. And if you're down that way, stop by their shop. They do a great job. Um, I haven't heard much off Beaver Dam Lake. Uh, I haven't heard much off Devil's Lake, although the water over there uh, should have fish, um, should be cool now, and, and the trout should be in. I, I know a lot of fish, trout like to cruise the south shoreline, and you can actually just see them swimming there, so that action can be good there. Um, otherwise, out on the rivers, uh, the rivers are also running very low right now. Uh, that's typical for this time of year, nothing to be concerned about. And if you're looking for fish, you know, you're gonna wanna look on the, on the backsides of sandbars, uh, corners where the river kicks in, uh, anywhere you can find deeper water, and even just slightly deeper water will likely hold the fish out there. Otherwise, the dams have been uh, very productive. You know, Prairie du Sac Dam here, uh, nice mixed bag of fish. White bass have been good. I've been hearing about some walleyes showing up, catfish as well. Uh, Lake Wisconsin's uh, had a great walleye bite. I've heard the walleye up, action up there has been awesome, uh, but the um, number or the size has been an issue. So great numbers. 
uh, not the best uh, for size. Uh, I have heard that um, some good action uh, during the day uh, over at Oki, and then a night bite on uh, the, the flats out here, kind of in the grade. Um, otherwise, yeah, um, up the river, it's going to be the same thing. If you're fishing the river, look for slightly deeper water. If you're fishing dams, uh, you'll likely find fish. Dell's Dam had some white bass I heard about. I haven't heard much specifically off Castle Rock or Pete and Well dams, but it's the same thing. Nice mixed bag of fish, walleyes out there, and in all the um, uh, flowages, including uh, Lake Wisconsin, Castle Rock, and Pete and Well, you're going to find fish um, in the uh, like panfish in shallow bays. I uh, haven't heard much specifically off the Wisconsin River, but they are catching fish off wing dams, walleyes, smallmouth, uh, bass, or, I'm sorry, panfish, a little shallower, rocky shorelines. And if you can find some weeds, that's awesome. Uh, and then, yeah, so the salmon run, officially, you know, rocking and rolling over here in Milwaukee, lots of fish swimming up the rivers. I personally have kind of struck out, been over there a couple times with my boys. The water's so low, it's just really hard to find fish where we are. And uh, hopefully, maybe they got some, you know, they got some rain yesterday a little bit. Maybe that'll push the fish up. What we need is like a solid inch to really bring the levels up and really start pushing fish up. You can see here on the DNR's Root River Report, um, they, uh, more salmon, a lot more salmon than, than we had last time. And it looks like the Chinook, uh, Chinook or King salmon are starting to catch the cohos. The cohos were way ahead before, uh, but this is a little more in balance with what I'm used to seeing is more kings rather than cohos. But uh, yeah, they're doing another uh, survey. It says Thursday, October 25th, which Thursday was yesterday. The 25th is today. So I, I, they're probably doing it today. And uh, yeah, so I try to keep uh, posted on, you know, what's going on over there to let you all know. But uh, yeah, get over there and enjoy some salmon fishing. But that's not the only game in town. You know, we'll have the cohos through November. Then, you know, you got steelhead and browns at the same time. So uh, that's my personal favorite time to get over there is chase those steelhead and brown trout. So Anyway, we'll, we'll keep you posted on that. Um, you know, with trout season being closed, we don't have, you know, much in the way, uh, you know, to talk about specific flies. I talked about salmon flies yesterday, but um, just wanted to talk about since, you know, turnover is basically past us, a lot of your bigger fish are going to have their feed bag on. Why not toss some, some meaty flies at them? So swing by the shop here, we got patterns that look like bluegills, patterns that look like giant green things. Uh, lots of things that look like meat that those fish are going to be attracted to, and they are hungry this time of year. So get out there and enjoy that. Uh, I guess that pretty much does it for the report. Feel free to post your comments and catch us below. We'd love to see what's going on out there. Um, do feel free to call the shop if you want me to expand on anything at 241-4225 and uh, we can uh, let you know what's going on. Otherwise, I do appreciate you tuning in. Uh, good luck out there. Good luck folks getting out in the woods. I'm heading out today. Um, and yeah, it's a great time of year. Love the fall. And yeah, take care everyone. We'll talk next week. Thanks so much.